So if we want to find V max, we multiply both sides by the square root of 2. That cancels out and it leaves the subject of the formula is V max. Is equal to 110 times the square root of 2. And how much does that come to? 100 x? I think you may have something that's wrong. So it's got to be smaller than 110. What's 110 times the square root of 2? The maximum oh. <laughs> My apologies, we're working out V max, so V max must be bigger than V yes. squared. Okay, thank you. So it's 155 point something. There you go. Yeah. Okay, so now we're going to find the value of 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 so v root mean square is v max over the square root of 2. We know its root mean square is 110. Multiply by the square root of 2, we get v max. That's the kind of typical problem you can get as well. Now, I'm, I'm finishing the section. It's a huge section. But if there's nothing that you don't understand, if there's anything you un don't understand, you must ask. Whoops. These legs need a bit more prit. They're beginning to collapse, a bit like me. Okay, so who knows Ohm's? What's Ohm's law say? Remember, v equals i r, or i v upon r, or r equals v upon i. No, r equals v upon i. But one of them's got to be multiplied. Really okay, do you recognize Ohm's law? Okay, that's Ohm's law. Now you're going to need that. Now I'm going to give you a definition for electrical power. There's this program called Tim the Taylor, Tim the Taylor Man, something. Tinkerman Taylor or something. Tim the Handyman Taylor. It's beyond, it was old. But he loved power. <laughs> he always acted like a gorilla when he got power. <laughs> when he got a big tool. Love, you should watch it sometimes. Do you guys like big, powerful tools? I think my favorite tool is a chainsaw. Boy, you stoke that thing up and it just goes through the logs. Especially if it's sharp. Okay. Do you know what the average power of a chainsaw, for example, is? And what it's measured in? Okay, so it's, it's about 250 watts. I mean, 2,000, it's over 2,000 watts. So power is measured in watts. Do you know what the average kettle is? Probably about... An average kettle, I think, is about 1,500 watts. So I thought, you know, I need something to make boil coffee here. I'm sorry we can't have coffee. We need a kettle. So at a hardware shop, I found this. And we just need a big beaker. We put this in, plug it in, boil our own water. But what I like about this thing, what I like about this thing is it's only 500 watts. A kettle's about 1,500 watts. It's three times more powerful. This is quite a low power thing. So I can even stick it in my big mug and just boil the water straight in my mug. Okay, let me tell you why I bought this. We have solar panels, right? And we have one battery. Now, two. If you don't want to flatten that battery, you need low power appliances. So remember I said you put your 
battery through an inverter, it turns it to 220, and then this might be low enough power to use when Eskom has gone on strike. So I haven't tried it out, but I could run, I could boil a cup of water on a car battery with, with this low power thing. That's why I bought it. Do you, don't, do you think it looks a bit dodgy? <laughs> no, that's the best part of it. <laughs> yeah, now this came straight from Germany. I had to cut off the plug, it didn't fit ours, joined it there. Then the wire that I found had a little bit of a lead that was showing, so I duct taped that, that up, and this is an old lead. So now I'm all set for coffee at school because they've shut down the stopper. Lovely. Okay, so what is power? Very simple. You're going to get this very quickly. Power equals volts. Do you think volts plays a role? Do you think a big voltage will give you a big power? Because yes. voltage is what pushes the electrons. The more push, the more power. And then the other thing that you get is current. A big current, big power. So those are the two things. Power is volts times amps. So if I have a 2000 watt chainsaw, can you work out? And we've got, what's the voltage on our mains? It's 220. What do you think is the current that flows through the wires of my chainsaw? I think I could almost do the math. About 20, 18. What is the current? Okay, I've got you the left. Say how much is it? 9,09. amps. Okay. 9,09. Now these plugs here normally are rated at 15 amps plus. These are called 15 amp plugs. So how many kettles could you have on one plug safely? If each kettle is about nine, uh, sorry, how many chainsaws could you have on one plug? Like one and a half, right? One safely. So, you've got to take into account our plugs are 15 amp plugs. 220 volts, 15 amp. So, you've got to balance it. Don't have too much on one plug or you will melt the wires. Or chop the switch at your, at your switch. Okay, now I want you to do this. If power is volts times amps, and if volts is amps times resistance, give me another formula for power. And if current is volts upon resistance, give me another formula for power. You see what I'm saying? So Asia, what you're going to do is you're going to say power is volts times amps. Then you're going to substitute V for that and get me another formula for power. Then you're going to leave the, and you're going to take the I and get me another formula for power by say power is equal to volts times volts upon resistance and then you'll get another formula for power. Just do it. Get me three formulae for power. So your first one is power is volts times amps. But volts is amps times resistance. Therefore, power is also equal to blah, blah, blah.
Who's got an answer for the first one? Tamika. Power is going to be equal to volts times, now instead of that, we're going to use that. So what's it going to be equal to? Power equal volts times. V of R. V of R? Which is V squared R. Um, sorry, V squared over R. Yeah, how easy was that? Do you know what the examiners do? Bless their hearts. They give you this on the data sheet. You don't even have to work it out. You think so, so? They don't just work with the data sheet. Well, last time they said you mustn't find stuff on the so on your BFF, you're going to find your best physics frame, you're going to find power is V squared upon R. So they don't give the data sheet, do they? They give you a data sheet. So You'd all dope horribly if you didn't get a data sheet. You'd be done. You'd be surprised. No one will ever, I promise you, I will give you one month's salary if they don't give you a data sheet. The whole class will have a big party. Okay, and what's the <laughs> other one? Power equals volts times amps, but V equals IR. Okay. So who's going to do the substitution for me? So what's power also equal to? I times R times I, which is I squared R. What did you say? <laughs> what? All that thing? Yeah. What? So they can give you that. On the dice, power is equal to that. Now, what if they say to you, this is an alternating current problem. They give you a house power. The house power of that thing there. The house power is 500 watts. And I ask you to work out the resistance of that. So if the power is that, what is the voltage that that uses? This uses? You plug it into the main, so 220. Now tell me, is this a root mean squared voltage? Yep. You see where we're going, folks? Use the root mean square for power. Now I'll ask you to find the resistance of this inside here. What are you going to do? You're going to reach for a formula that's got power, voltage, resistance. And would you mind working out the resistance of this for me? So what are you going to say? So just work it out. What is the resistance of this? If you've got an answer, just put up a hand, but don't shout out the answer. So that would be a typical question they ask. Find the resistance of my, it's called an immersion heater. You know, you won't believe it, but I did some really stupid things in my youth. I can't believe it. Do you know the stupid things I did in my youth? Thank you for asking. <laughs> You're not going to believe this. When I was about 20 something, I put one in, I filled my bath in the morning to the level I wanted. I dipped one of these in my bath. I took an alarm clock. Oh my God. And the alarm clock 
or one of those, you know those timers that you can switch the lights on, that I made my own one, with an alarm clock. So then the timer was set, it was set at half an hour before I went to leave. It switched on the water and boiled the water in my bath, or heated the water in my bath. So, it's the dumbest thing you can think of, because, I mean, this is like sitting in a bath. And, I mean, what, I don't, I can't remember why I did it. Was I trying to save electricity? I think maybe we weren't using the geese or something. And you know one other stupid thing that I did in my youth? My first year of teaching, I can't believe I was this dumb. I was teaching life science, and I kept a whole lot of pets in the back room. And some kid brought a spitting cobra to school. A spitting cobra. Those things that spit venom into your eyes. And we kept the thing in the back room. He came, we, we had a whole colony of mice, we grew mice, we threw them in, the spitting cobra would bite the mice, eat them, we'd watch the bulge in the thing. We kept all kinds of snakes and toads and this and that, we had hundreds of pets. But the thought that a kid could bring a spitting cobra to school, and I was dumb enough to allow him to keep it there. He said he worked for the snake park, but just has to make one mistake and bite them. Imagine the, imagine the consequences of a kid getting bitten. And that thing used to spit. We kept it in an aquarium. If, you had, if your eyes were there, it used to spit against the glass. Those were just some of the dumb things that I used to do. I feel like someone's going to make a gun one day. I feel like someone's going to do it. So you inspired me. Well, you know, I learned something. I learned something yesterday. <laughs> what I consider a dumb thing. I wanted to see if this was pure alcohol. So, <laughs> so I took some of that. Now, it looks like it's not burning. Can you see it burning? But it's definitely burning. It's it's burning. It, it burns fantastically, this stuff. But now don't go using it up. You just got a new bottle. And it just burns and burns and burns. And you could fondue over this, you know? You put your oil in a pot and you dip your meat on a skewer and you fondue. So yes. So here's how you make a lovely lamp. <laughs> Just to show you it's burning. So we're just going to have to leave it somewhere. Say, like here. And you know what? It all burns away. It's, it's like 100% pure alcohol. Just needs a little bit of sticky oil. Oh, I remember one dumb thing my, that we did. Do you know you can't see the flame, right? So, this friend and I, we had uh, steam engines. And they ran on methylated spirits, right? So, they were lovely. You filled the little boiler with water, and then you, you let the pressure build up, and then you spun it, and it went, and then it was like a proper train. It was a steam engine. And then we had a little railway system that went up to the treehouse with ropes, and it carried stuff up and down from the treehouse. But anyway, this friend, he thought the boiler was out. So he took the bottle of methylated spirits and he poured it onto the flame. You should have seen how that mess blew out. It burnt into the bottle and blew the mess right, like a flamethrower, right up the driveway. Because you, can't, you cannot see it burning. It's still burning. So now imagine you put more mess on here and then it, boom. 
Anyway, but we did many dumb things in our youth. Okay, youth is you much smarter now. It's going to look like Susan Biggie. Okay, guys, last points here. If you are using these for alternating current or house things, always use V root mean squared. If you're using current, use root mean square current. This power is power root mean square. Everything is root mean square. Volts, root mean square, amps, root mean square. If it is alternating current, always use this. Don't use the Vmax. They will give you the Vmax. You will have to work out the V root mean square. Then you will have to plug it out and find the formula. Sorry, did someone work out what the resistance of this was? So power, power is 500 equals V root mean squared squared over resistance. So cross multiplying and putting it the other way around, resistance equals V root mean squared squared over 500. Or in other words, 220 over 500. But it's 220 squared. Am I right? Yeah. And then what's the answer? 96, 8. And that would be O's. Nearly 100 O's. Okay. Now, if I had a kettle that was three times more powerful than this, what do you think the resistance would be? More or less?